The cutscene starts with a random Defenders of Man trooper luring Zerg to a planet using a psi-emitter. Afterwards, Nova arrives and finds that there's high casualties, no one can evacuate, and she doesn't have enough forces to defeat the Zerg. Meanwhile, a Defenders of Man fleet is inbound to save everyone. Nova objects to this as her crew are heroes for some reason, and demands that this ship lands on the planet. Trouble in Paradise the mission starts with Rigel somehow knowing that Psyamitters have been used. Also, the Defenders of Man are somehow on this planet and are protecting all the civilians who are able to fit into one stadium. Nova plans to defeat the Zerg, even though she was just told that they don't have enough people to do this. Also, somehow the Zerg are able to warp in, even though only Protoss have that technology. On the surface, Nova and the Banshees attack the hatcheries to weaken the Zerg. After the time limit runs out, Rigel realises that the warp signatures are from the Taldarim, who plan to eradicate the Defenders of Man. As this will kill the civilians, Nova plans to stop the Taldarim. For no reason, the Taldarim put four shield projectors on this planet, rather than keeping them in orbit. So, if Nova can destroy them, the Mothership won't be able to charge their shields, which will somehow stop the rest of the Taldarim fleet attacking the Defenders of Man. Also, destroying all the Zerg hatcheries in the Taldrin fleet beacon will give you new tech. After destroying a shield projector, the Taldrin will send a small force to attack you. Once all four are destroyed, the Taldrin mothership will attack your base, even though they won't attack the defenders of man's base without their shields. Once the mothership is destroyed, the Taldrin will retreat, and the defenders of man will defeat the Zerg. During the cutscene, Alarax suddenly appears on Nova's ship, and Rigel explains he's a guest. Alarax says he wants to annihilate the Defenders of Man because they attacked a remote Taldrim outpost and wants Nelvia to find them. Nova says she can't remember anything, and Alarax responds by saying that Telrazine will restore her memories and he can provide her with a source of it if she helps him find the Defenders of Man. Night Terrors the mission starts with Nova going to Jarban Minor and having to fight the Taldrim for Terezine, possibly to cull weak warriors. While extracting Terezine, Nova finds that the missing Emojin scientists were infested and that the extraction process draws infested Terrans towards you. Next, some surviving Emojins agree to work with you if you rescue them. Afterwards, the Taldrim try to destroy their extraction devices even though this will prevent them getting Terrazine. There are also an Emojin mine and a science facility you can go to for tech and boss battles. Once you extract five devices worth of Terrazine, you win the mission. Nova asks Alarak how to contact him, and he replies that he'll know once the Defenders of Man's base has been found. During the cutscene, Valerian says that he can't take action against the Defenders of Man until he knows who is leading them. Rigel plans to administer the Terrazine to Nova in micro doses to reduce the chances of a psychotic episode. Nova then has a flashback to Schrapsburg, where she believes the Defenders of Man and Dominion are working together, and that her mission was on Antigua Prime. Flashpoint. The mission starts with Rigel explaining that Antigua Prime fell early, but the Defenders of Man weren't considered to be involved. As Nova approaches each coordinate, you get a terrazine induced flashback where Wrangler tells you and Stone that you're protecting the planet from Zerg, while your choices affect which Zerg unit you'll face in the present. Also, these sites are the only places where these specific Zerg are present, so once you destroy them, there's nowhere else that can produce these Zerg. Also, the subways work so you can use them to transport units around. In the second flashback, Stone is suspicious about why they haven't heard of this technology before. Nova wonders if Stone made it back. Rigel says only Nova reported back, and no one cares about Delta and Pierce. Also, there's some tech you can find. In the third flashback, Nova notices a psionic resonance after the activation. Present Nova realises that these devices didn't protect the world, but destroyed it. In the fourth flashback, Stone realises if the Defenders of Man are lying about working with the Dominion, they must have someone on the inside. Nova realises she's planted psi emitters like the Confederacy did. Stone says their mission files are in the Operations Centre, 
which can somehow be used to show the Dominion something, then the Zerg attack. At the final coordinates, Nova finds the mission backup files. Then in the final flashback cutscene, Nova is restrained by Wrangler and the technician in the Strapsburg base. Nova then codes a vague warning for herself, even though General Davis hasn't ordered her memories to be wiped. Next, Nova tells Valerian General Davis is leading the Defenders of Man. Nova wants to kill her, but Valerian doesn't want her to become a martyr, and tells Nova to follow his plan. Then Valerian tells General Davis he wants to abdicate. Conclusion This pack is where the plot completely falls apart. First I'll start with the positives. The defenders of man using psiometers did explain why in sudden strike the zerg suddenly appeared. Though it was odd that this base couldn't detect the psiometers when, in trouble in paradise, Rigel could detect them. Taking terazine in microdoses to reduce the chances of a psychotic episode provide a good way to explain why Nova can't regain her memories all at once. It also makes Flashpoint more replayable as you can control which Zerg are in which areas. And now for the numerous problems with each mission. First issue in Trouble in Paradise is why is only Nova's ship here? In enemy intelligence, Nova discovered that the defenders of man were going to cause a Zerg attack on this planet that would kill thousands, yet she doesn't seem to have informed Valerian about this, despite being able to contact him from this ship. I suspect the reason Nova didn't contact Valerian to get a Dominion fleet to defeat the Zerg is because the writers wanted Nova to stop the Zerg by herself, even though it made no sense for her not to contact Valerian when she was so upset about thousands dying. A Dominion fleet would also make the Taldrine less likely to contact Nova. Regardless of whether it's an oversight by the writers or a deliberate decision, it's still bad writing. The second issue is what happened to the Defenders of Man fleet mentioned in the intro. Did Nova wait for it to arrive before trying to save people? Was it going to link up with another Defenders of Man force already on this planet? Did it arrive after the Taldrine were defeated and helped defeat the Zerg? This is a clear example of the intro not being consistent with the mission. The third issue is how did Rigel mistake Warp signatures for Zerg when Zerg can't warp? I suspect the writers wanted to make it unclear what was going to happen, but all they did was make Rigel look stupid. The fourth issue is why don't the Taldrin use all their forces, instead of one ship, to attack the defenders of man? This would make sense if they only had a small fleet, but in the intro they're shown having a huge fleet that is capable of attacking this planet from orbit. This mission reminds me of the Wings of Liberty mission Safe Haven, where the Protoss used the Nexuses in three small bases to power the shields of their purifier. Though this mission made more sense as the shields didn't disappear from the purifier until all the Nexuses were destroyed and the purifier didn't stop destroying colonist bases because they lost their shields. I suspect the writers tried to copy this mission but because they made the Taldrine forces so much larger, they created a scenario where it didn't make any sense for them to only use one ship. Thus they created a contrived scenario where the Taldrine can only use one ship, because if they used more, then Nova wouldn't be able to beat them. The mission Night Terrors was even more contrived. The first issue is why does Alarak think Nova wants to annihilate the Defenders of Man? Or would be good at finding them when in the only mission involving the Taldrim and Nova, she attacked the Taldrim to save the Defenders of Man. This would have made sense if there had been several missions where the Taldrim went to attack bases belonging to the Defenders of Man only to find Nova already attacking them. But in the previous four missions, Nova has spent two missions running from the Defenders of Man, one attacking their base and one protecting them. Thus, we have a contrived event where Alarak knows things about Nova he had no way of knowing, simply because the plot needs Alarak to help Nova. I feel that Alarak contacting Nova would have worked better after enemy intelligence, as this was the only mission where Nova found and attacked the Defenders of Man base. Unlike after Trouble in Paradise, where Nova attacked the Taldarine to protect the Defenders of Man. The second issue is, why did the Defenders of Man attack the Taldarine? In the original Starcraft Ghost, Colonel Haller needed Terezine to make spectres, so he would have had a reason to attack the Taldrim to steal their Terezine, 
but the defenders of man want to use the psi emitters to lure the zerg to specific planets so they can save these planets in order to make valerian look weak thus they have no reason to attack any protoss planets as they can't control where the protoss will attack I suspect the writers introduced a contrived event so they could include a popular character in this pack. Third issue is why are there Zerg by these extraction devices? Did the Taldream ignore the Zerg when they built these devices? Or did they build these devices then just watch the Zerg form bases around them? Neither of these scenarios make any sense. It would make sense if the Taldream built these devices, left the planet, returned to find the Zerg had colonised this world, and wanted Nova to remove the Zerg so they could collect their Terrazine. However, the Taldream have a base on this planet that is completely indifferent to the Zerg infestation. As a result, the premise for this mission makes no sense. Fourth issue is why are the Taldream trying to destroy their own extraction devices rather than use them to extract Terrazine? Especially since in Legacy of the Void, Terrazine was important to them. This mission reminds me of the Wings of Liberty mission, Welcome to the Jungle, where Reyna had to get Terrazine from geysers, while the Taldarine tried to seal these geysers. This mission made more sense as the Taldarine weren't destroying their own extraction devices, could most likely unseal the geysers once Reyna left, and they didn't allow the planet to become infested with Zerg. Yet again, the writers have recycled a previous mission from Wings of Liberty, added Zerg to it, and made it completely nonsensical. Finally, the mission Flashpoint has its own set of problems. The first issue is why does Valerian need to know who the leader of the Defenders of Man is in order to take action against them? I'm guessing he's worried about the leader covering up their involvement, but raiding Defenders of Man bases will provide him with additional information regarding who may be leading them. The second issue is regarding the Psyemitters. In Starcraft 1, Menx put Psyemitters on Antigua Prime in order to escape from the Confederacy, so it's odd that this is never mentioned especially since this could explain why there are so many Psy emitters on Antigua Prime. The third issue is, what is the point of the mission backup files? The Dominion has already declared the Defenders of Man a terrorist organisation, so they must have some evidence of them acting illegally, and Valerian said that he can't act against them until he knows who their leader is. These files would have been useful if Valerian said he needed more evidence before he could shut down the Defenders of Man, but not if he needed to know their leader. I suspect this mission was rewritten, but this part wasn't updated to reflect the new intro. Fourth issue is, why is General Davis here? I suspect the writers needed an over to find out she was in charge of the Defenders of Man, so they created a contrived event where General Davis just happened to be in this base, even though she had no reason to be here. Fifth issue is regarding how minor General Davis was throughout these packs. Unlike in Starcraft Ghost, where Colonel Hauler was Nova's boss, General Davis wasn't involved in the plot prior to this, so the big reveal doesn't have any impact. It may have been better if General Davis was meant to be helping Nova investigate the Defenders of Man, but was secretly sabotaging it. The final issue is that the timeline makes no sense. Nova was on Shrapsburg for brainwashing, travels to Antigua Prime where she learns she's planting Psyemitters, immediately gets captured, is sent back to Shrapsburg for more brainwashing, where she writes herself a warning, reacts to this warning, and is told by Horner that the Defenders of Man is a terrorist organisation and she's wanted for treason. The problem is that Rigel said Antigua Prime was one of the first plants to be attacked by the Zerg and the Defenders of Man weren't considered to be involved with this so there's no reason for them to be considered a terrorist organisation. Also, no one mentions Nova being on Antigua Prime, so it's unclear what act of treason she's meant to have committed. It's also unclear when Nova went to Tarsonis or why she'd even need to go there. So unless Nova and the Defenders of Man engaged in something else before going to Antigua Prime, that was never mentioned, this Pack 2 mission and the way Horner acts in Pack 1 are contradictory. I suspect the writers wanted to have a big reveal about everyone knowing that Nova was helping a terrorist organisation in the first pack, but didn't realise that this reveal wouldn't make any sense if everyone was covering their, their actions in the second pack. Thus, the lack of planning by the writers has caused the plot to become nonsensical. 
In conclusion, this pack had multiple plot contrivances, such as Nova not telling Valerian about the attacks on this planet, the Taldream helping Nova for no reason, the Taldream ignoring the Zerg infestation on their planet, and trying to destroy their own extraction devices, and General Davis being on Shrapsburg for no reason. It also couldn't maintain any sort of timeline, as in Pack 1 Nova was supposed to have been missing for months, and was known to be working with the terrorist Defenders of Man, but in Pack 2 Nova rebelled almost immediately, and the Defenders of Man have only recently started fighting the Zerg. Yet again these missions are being derailed due to the lack of planning and bad writing by the writers.